It always starts out on a personal level with some of the best clients and it's not noise because to them it's valuable. The end result isn't just clients and revenue. Yep. You want to love this work too. You want to love the people that you're working with. You don't just do stuff for money. Like there is a personal side to everything. On episode 347 of the podcast, we are talking about the importance of nurturing relationships with agencies and other potential clients. Uh, you will hopefully also discover strategies that will help you to network effectively without having to be awkward. Don't ask me because I'm really, I'm like the king of being awkward. No, I'm just teasing. Uh, all that and so much more in this episode. What's up, friend? I am Ryan Coral from Studio Sherpas, and I wanna welcome you to the Grow Your Video Business Podcast. This show is for you if you are a corporate commercial filmmaker and you really wanna work on the business of video production. If you want to work on your business, uh, we typically aren't talking about uh, you know the latest, coolest cameras and gear, even though that's fun, conversational type stuff. We talk about things that will help you build something that's profitable, something that uh, will bring more freedom uh, and more fun into uh, the world of business. Because even though you're creative, uh, you need to know uh, some very basic things about running a business. So I'm very grateful that you're here. Uh, dude, this is like episode 347. <laughs> there are a lot of episodes where we talk about the business of video production. So I am, I am so thankful that you are hanging out with us today. If you haven't uh, gone through my workshop called the Six Figure Filmmaker Workshop, I wanna invite you to check this out. It is uh, a workshop where I cover the three biggest myths about growing a successful business and a successful video business, because that's the only kind of business that really I've run. Uh, and I also share three foundational things that if you don't have these things implemented in your business, then you're gonna be stuck in a freelancer mindset that is really gonna stunt your growth and hold you back from building the video business of your dreams. You can get access to this workshop by going to studiosherpas.com slash workshop. And here's the thing, I really believe uh, the, 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 the starving artist mindset mentality that should not be your story. That doesn't have to be your story. Real artists don't starve. Uh, my friend Jeff Coins wrote a book called that. Uh, I had him on the show a super long time ago. Great read, but I wanna help you get out of the mindset that says uh, that you shouldn't thrive in your business, that you should just make enough to get by. That's what I believe, that's what I thought for a very long time in my life. And I'm so glad that I was able to get out of that mindset because there's so much more freedom in the work that we do. There's so much more freedom when it comes to uh, quoting jobs and thinking through like, uh, you know, what's possible, what's possible in your life and what's possible with your business. So if you haven't accessed this workshop, even if you have, I think by the time that this video is going out, there's gonna be an all new, version of this workshop. It's a lot tighter. Uh, I've refined it. I've uh, I've just made it better. So you're going to want to check it out again. To get access to that workshop, go to studiosherpas.com slash workshop. I almost forgot what the URL was. <laughs> All right, with that, let's get into today's episode. What's up, friends? Hey, welcome to another edition of the podcast. That's the second time I've said edition today. I never say that, but here we are. Another episode of the show today with me, Mr. Peter Grano. You may know him from the 10X Filmmaker group that we are part of, or you just may know him uh, some other way. <laughs> Peter, welcome to the show, man. Super pumped to have you. Thank you, Ryan. I'm excited to be here, man. And I did say I was going to throw some curveballs. I didn't even like say like you know where you're from. You're from Saint Saint Augustine, Florida, uh, which I yes, I, sir. Can, I confuse with Saint Pete. So forgive me. I know that's probably like curse words mm. to say something like that. Uh, it's okay. You're the lead video producer <laughs> at Business Builders, a small but mm -hmm. mighty marketing agency. Uh, what what is what is the, what does your work actually look like? The the work that you do. Uh, we basically help people grow their business. So whether it's marketing, uh, messaging, websites, video production, 
um, just general counsel in life. Uh, we're, we're those people for the for our clients. And what does your team look like? Like, how many people do you got? What roles are there? Are you hiring? Because I'm uh, right now. For a job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right now we're at about fifteen or so. Wow. Um, fifteen in house, and then we've got some contractors here and there. Um, uh, so yeah, it's a smaller team, but it's um, it's been it's been good just to see the the power of a small team. I think you can be pretty nimble um, sometimes that way, and uh, you can really pivot if you need to really quickly, which is good. Yeah. So 15, I mean, when I, when I think 15, I'm like, that's not very small, dude. I mean, like, you know, most of us <laughs> that are a part of this show, uh, we have very, very tiny, but mighty teams, like one person, you know, we've got, I think we've got five. Um, so 15, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> Well, I should clarify. So I work at a marketing company, and so I am in the video production side of things. But you know, it's it's just me and one other person when yeah. it comes to that. So um, you know, it's a whole marketing company, and that mm-hmm. might be a little bit different than what you're used to. But the um, yeah, the day to day sort of video production work is done by myself and a lady named Hope, um, who's kind of our admin coordinator lady, and she's. Um, just super helpful in being able to let me kind of do what I need to do and, and she can do all the things that I would rather not be doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and that's, and that's been a huge help, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a one man show, uh, some of the time. Or most so of the time. <laughs> what, like what, what's the majority, are you doing like a particular kind of film for the businesses that you guys are working with? Um, yeah, uh, honestly, we're pretty diverse. Um, you know, we're doing uh, stuff like uh, social commercials. We're doing stuff like actual TV commercials. So all the all the ranges of budgets, anywhere from you know thirty five thousand to three thirty five hundred. You know, so it really really a large range. Um, brand films, uh, explainer videos, not really any any animated stuff. I kind of stay away from that stuff, but. Um, yeah, just the the bread and butter of a corporate video production company is what we're doing typically. I, I thought when you were describing the budgets, I thought you were saying thirty five thousand to thirty five million. I was going to be like, "Whoa, dude, that's a <laughs> big spread there." <laughs> yeah, this this guy in Abu Dhabi, he uh, hired us one time, and he just said, "Let it rain," you know. <laughs> so, is that no. is that true? Um, no, oh, no, okay, no, that yeah, would be great. I'm like, though. well, you never know. I mean. <laughs> We've had one client like that. Um, what, uh, like on a standard, you know, your typical production, what does your team look like? What are, what, what are you putting together? Is it just you? Are you by yourself? You got um, others? Yeah. So usually it's, yeah, usually it's me. Um, so I'll, I'll be the typical, the DP, the editor, the director, um, those sorts of roles. And then we do, we we usually have hope um, involved as far as um, coordinating stuff, doing all the admin, task management stuff, um, internal stuff for us, budgets, model release forms, all that stuff. And, and she's then, she's um, pretty much she's not on set. She's doing all the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, typically she's whatever. not on set. Um, she'll bring lunch sometimes if we need it, but um, typically she's not. And then. Um, so at the marketing company, we have several account managers, and those um, folks are usually involved um, pretty heavily as well on a shoot day. So okay, yeah. you know, if it's a if it's a client, you know, we're going to have their account manager there, um, and maybe their account coordinator as well, just to kind of talk to the client yeah. <laughs> as I'm setting up and keep them busy. Um, but also just the, uh, a lot of the interviews, uh, like interview based projects we do, like if we're doing any FAQ videos, we're asking them and they have to answer, we'll have the account manager sit down and be the one to ask them the yeah. questions. Um, it saves me a little bit more brain power to, to focus on the shots and stuff like that. So, um, but you know, sometimes it's just me and, um, and other times, you know, we're actually hiring a full crew um, you know, DP, focus puller, gaffer, grips, yeah. um, uh, all that fun stuff. Um, so that's, yeah, it's, it's been fun though. I've been, I've been always trying to just like push ourselves. Um, cause when we started, I was, um, I didn't know anything. Um, I just got started, uh, my, so I'll just tell you the backstory here. My wife, um, Ashley, she got started um, in video production uh, six or seven or maybe eight years ago now. And, um, and over the course of a few years, I started helping her 
And um, it was just really cool to see, like, uh, we're, we're both creative people, musicians, um, and just to see, like, the amount of creative power that can go into this stuff. Um, and also, for me, a big part of it is just the technical side. I love the technical stuff. And, um, and so marrying those things together um, when it came to video production was just something I became obsessed with. And uh, she convinced me about five years ago to quit my other job and to, uh, you know, start doing freelance uh, videography. And around that same time, we had our first child. Um, we found out we were pregnant basically the day our my health insurance stopped with that other company. So uh, we were like, oh, crap, <laughs> self-pay, yay. Um, so we had a baby. Um, <laughs> several months later and uh it was just like that kind of moment you're like ah we need to make this work and it's just stressful you know but i think um, you know we we knew that you know god has his timing for all things and so this is just part of his plan and and we weren't um we weren't scared of making it work um so anyways i started um helping her out with this uh client of hers named design extensions back at the time mm. that was the previous name of business builders and she did subcontracting work for them and helped her over the course of a year or two and um and then they they were able to take me full time um in march of 2020 i believe so it was right when the world was about to shut down and that was a huge thing uh for me just because i know a lot of a lot of freelancers um had a really hard time uh, that same month um, and then months after. Um, and so, um, again, God's timing, but it was just like a huge blessing to have a full-time job, know that there was money coming in, and um, I was full-time here at Business Builders um, as of, I think it was March 2020. Um, so, And what's, is your yeah. wife still in the business or what, what does she do? Yeah, so we still shoot weddings together. Um, we do those on the weekends, um, you know, maybe 20-ish a, a year, 15 to 20. And um, so that keeps us kind of regular behind the camera. Um, and she also does like family sessions um, or or other work. She does. She has a few retainer clients around town um, that she does, you know, smaller smaller work for um, here and there. But we have two kids now, um, Symphony's five and or almost five and Lucy's two, um, two girls. And so that keeps her busy. And um, she she finds time to squeak in edits here and there, but it's a lot. So <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you know the struggle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. Uh, I love that name too, Symphony uh, and Lucy. Those are those are great names. Um, your t shirt, the original, What what is this? Uh, this is a present. Uh, we got it from uh, Stacy. She's a Stacey, she's one of the lover. We, we we call her the we call her the office mom here, and she <laughs> basically takes care of the team, um, getting getting all the things behind the scenes. She does payroll and admin stuff. But um, when uh, I think it was when Lucy was born, yeah, she got myself this T-shirt, and then she got Lucy a little onesie that said the remix. Oh my um, gosh! Stop it! It was, <laughs> it was like the cutest little thing. Um, so it was fun. So I've, I've just enjoyed this T-shirt ever since that. That is that really time. good. It says the original. If you're not watching, so uh, Peter, what would you say is working really well uh, inside of? The marketing, you know, like the advantage that you have that I think most of us as we're, as we're listening, you know, there might be a feeling of like, oh gosh, well, you know, Peter, he gets, I just, you know, when you go on set, <laughs> you gotta manage the client, you gotta do the setup, like figure out the thing, like come up with the quit, like all that. So there, there might be a feeling of like, oh, it must be nice. You know, Peter's got this, regardless <laughs> of that, you know, there, there is, yeah your setup is, is basically like, you know, my business is a microcosm of what you guys are doing, right? Because we're doing marketing, we're doing yeah. all, all of those yep. things and we're hiring contractors when we know that, you know, we're gonna need somebody asking questions or setting up or being with the client or whatever the case may be. So we're building out the crew that we need for the day. With the projects that you guys are doing, like, what are you seeing? Like more more clients moving this direction, doing this kind of video, like what's what, what is the what's the landscape for you these days? Yeah. Um, it's depressing. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, a lot of, a lot, a lot of people are, a lot of people are turning and it's not a bad thing. Uh, it's just a trend, but a lot of people for marketing are turning to influencers mm -hmm. and 
you know, it's a crappy video um, with a smartphone, but it's it's honest and it's um, what people can relate to. And so it's very powerful when you see somebody that, you know, you've been following, you know, um, posting things that, you know, you you are interested in. And then they're like, oh, yeah, check out this um, new pasta sauce here. It's organic and it's really good. And, um, you know, so we're, 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 levering, we're leveraging influencers um, for some of our clients just because, um, not that it's cheaper, it's definitely not really cheaper, but it's, right. it's just another form of content that people find relevant today. So um, the, the influencer content is, is big right now, um, and I don't think it's going to stop, um, unfortunately or fortunately for us. I think what we need to figure out is coming alongside of that. I've, with some of our clients, for one client in particular, um, their, their name is Antonio Carlo, and it's a pasta sauce company, like, um, you know, high end from Nana's recipe, you know, marinara, um, that kind <laughs> of pasta sauce. And it's, yeah, grano, <laughs> it's a good. And, and so their, um, their account manager here, Megan, she's been involved with them from the beginning, almost from the beginning of, of their in, uh, Instagram and Facebook accounts. So from ground zero, we've, we've built up their brand. And um, it's interesting because, you know, we're, we're trying to blend um, high quality stuff with this influencer stuff. Mm. And I think that's where it's at. You need to, um, one problem we're seeing with influencer stuff right now is, or, or just like user generated content. Um, so, you know, say like, uh, you know, a, a wannabe content creator basically posts a nice vi- uh, picture of, or a video of their products. They don't have any control over that stuff. Um, so when they're um, when they're going through their Instagram and they're trying to reshare some of this stuff, and it's um, created by somebody else, they don't have control over it, and um, it just presents some challenges for them in that regard. So uh, it's been important for us to kind of come alongside the influencer stuff and create like a, a styled shoot here and there, um, you know, seventy five hundred here, seventy five hundred there, and make sure that's in their budget so that mm-hmm. way they can have control over their own assets because that's um that's something you just don't get with influencer content um so there are problems but there are benefits to both yeah what yeah that's that's a big thing like if it were up to you where what what direction do you think businesses should be going i mean sounds like the influencer stuff is it's kind of working but if it were up to you what what would you recommend how would you consult a client just do both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh right now that's what I'm telling people um and I'm I'm working with Megan on that account because it's it is is just yeah, there there it's not a one trick pony, you know, nothing really is. Um and so but it's it's important to explain the pros and cons to to you know these clients when they're like, "Oh, well, if I post on TikTok, I'll get 30,000 views within a week." And I'm like, Right, but um, like, how much control do you have over what they do after they see that video? Like, that needs to be something you think about too. So, there's there's a lot of um, exposure tools out there, like TikTok or Reels or whatever. All all these vertical video. I'm like, no, stop using vertical video. It's so hard to uh, to edit when you're using a horizontal clip. But um, but just you know, knowing that um, there's benefits to it and. And explaining those benefits um, and those cons to people and just realizing that you need a, I mean, it's like anything in life, you need a balance, right? You need a balance of good stuff. You need a balance of the the fun stuff. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, it does make sense. And I feel like that's, you know, when people started posting photos and started taking video with their, with their smartphones, f- for me, I, I, I kind of... <sighs> You know, at that point we were doing these brand films and I was just like, well, people are going to feel like you know, everybody's saying you got to post on social and you got to, you know, be shown up and, you know, creating your own content. And, and that's the, the conversation that I have still with clients today is, yeah, you need to be showing up. You need to, you know, pull out your cell phone and shoot a video of you behind the scenes on set, you know, during a, a, during a brand shoot of, of your brand, yeah, yeah. you know, film, film guys like us on set and be like, Hey, today we're working with tell studios or filming our brand story, sharing that on social. People are going to love that. It's like, wow, you're pulling the curtain back, but then it's like, well, what's next, right? There's, there's mm-hmm. this whole, uh, journey that 
clients go on, potential clients go on this, the customer journey, and they're not just going to, you know, hire you after seeing that video. They, they, they're going to want to know more like, wow, this is really interesting. And the way to know more is like, I mean, you've got to control the messaging at some level and it should match your aesthetic, your brand at some level. So you probably should have a flagship video that is, is, it, it, it doesn't have to be over polished. It should really match the look and feel of your brand. So if your whole brand is built on like the influencer style or aesthetic, then everything should probably be hand, handheld and should feel like selfie style or whatever that trend is. And you, <laughs> you shouldn't have like a really nice produced video, right? Like that, that we would want to you know mm-hmm. create. So well, it, uh, it, yeah. It's, yeah. it's just like matching that, matching the aesthetic of the brand that can guide people through the the, the entire process, um, at least something like that. So create a ton of social content that can point people to your main website and your main website, like take people, continue the, the journey from there on out, which might include a, a well done brand video. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish I had this um, kind of chart in front of me, but there's a chart I re- recently read where it's um, talking about the pros and cons. It might have been Wistia that did it or um, Raindrop Agency out in San Diego, but they did a really helpful chart. Maybe you can find it somewhere. But um, it, well, you know, Wistia just came out why. with a, a report. Is that is that what you're talking about? Well, yeah, Wistia has the the annual reports, but I think Raindrop Agency, I get their emails and they um they did a cool like comparison of why you should do certain types of videos and um you know, just listed the pros and the cons, but um yeah, there's there's benefits and drawbacks to each type. Um, you know, that's that's what's most important to tell our clients. Um and so I I think um, you know, when you're talking about the behind the scenes smartphone footage stuff, like that's such a challenge for me personally. I'm sure for others, um, as you're on a shoot, you're just like, ah, I just wrapped up and I didn't take a single photo or video on my phone. This would have been such good uh, social content. Um, Because that's, I I forget who um, who said it. Maybe it's Gary V, but he's like, don't create, document, Mm, right? And so. As you're posting on social media, all you have to do is snap a few behind the scenes, and uh, you know maybe a funny like thing or something like that with the client, um, and that's your social content for the day or the week. You know, it didn't take that much time to do it. You know, but it's it's just kind of creating that mentality, and um, and that's still a struggle for me. But um, you know, the the times, um, well, I'll give you a good example, actually, of how this works really well. I still do wedding films, and every time we do a wedding, the next day we post on Instagram a one-minute vertical reel of you know all the good clips, yeah. and that's how we stay in business. <laughs> that's all we need, you know. Um, but it's just that that next day gratification of of here's something, um, and you don't have to do like a teaser video of it, but you do have to post something just so that people know you're. In, actively shooting people see that you're it's just top of mind stuff um you know you're top of mind um when when people are like oh who's that guy with the camera again or who's that girl with the camera again oh yeah that girl or that guy so man that's so good Uh, i just made myself a note Uh, we talked about this as a team somewhat recently and i just threw this out there i i said because back when we were doing weddings you know, sometimes on like Sunday, you know, we shoot a wedding on Saturday and then sometimes on Sunday I would, I would throw together a trailer and then, and then email that out on Monday uh, or Sunday if I could. Mm. And people are just like blown away. And <laughs> that, wait, you know, wait, like, can I ask you what, when you start, what did you start doing that? Uh, Cause you've been doing long, this a long time. Um, I mean, I was probably in like 2008. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was like a, I was, I, I graduated high school in 2009. <laughs> 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 That's amazing. Cool, man. Making me feel great. Dude. Uh, anyway, oh, man. but what the OG, right? As, <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's the shirt I need. The original. I'm the <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. I'm wearing your close. shirt, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm wearing um, your shirt. But for our corporate clients, I mean, I remember uh, we did this like six day shoot down in Florida, actually in Florida, uh, uh, up in Tallahassee. Uh, this is cool. Mm, yeah. Like we were on a ranch, we were all these cattle. This is like commercial, not a commercial, but a documentary for beef. And we had a client there, mm. and the client wanted to see selects. And so we we're pulling selects together. 
and we we're getting beautiful footage and they were blown away. And that was the first time mm. that I really was like, we, we were putting together like a, just a short reel of the selects from the day at the end of the day. And we hadn't done that. I hadn't done that since our wedding days. And, you know, we would do same wow. day edits. So we would play a video like at, at, during the reception and people were like, again, minds blown and everybody coming up to us like, man, that was amazing. And so instead of the bride and groom being the center of attention, we became the center of attention, <laughs> which is great. But my point <laughs> is I want to figure out a process that we can do this for our corporate mm -hmm. clients. You know, if we spend a day with them or two days with them, why can't we just grab like, you know, and create a 30 second really quick, uh, you know, beauty shots, uh, a quick sound bite mm -hmm. and, and give that <clears throat> yeah. to them because normally they don't see something for two weeks, four weeks, you know, maybe six weeks after the shoot. And so there's gotta be this anticipation. Yep. This like, wh what did, what did they get? Was it good? Um, even yep. being on set and being able to show a client, like right after you get the shot and showing them your camera, you know, I know we did that with our brides and grooms a lot and they'd be like, Oh my gosh. But we've done that with, with our corporate clients before and, and they freak out, but that's what you, you want to yep. create those like, you know, these, those emotional, like the, the, the feelings you want to create those. Yeah. Because those are the things that people remember. Yeah. And it, and it's, and to me, like the, the best feeling ever is after a shoot, you know, you go home, you dump your footage, you look over the clips, you're like, oh, this is oh, fresh yeah. baked goodness right here. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, it's just the best feeling in the world to see after you've, you shot something, what it looked like. But, um, one thing I've uh, I've been inspired by some one of my buddies, um, Craig Harris. Um, he's out of Asheville, Greenville, somewhere around there. Um, but anyways, he he's a DP, and he he's been posting recently. Um, like you're talking about, just these um, short things right after the shoot. And it's uh, I love how he does it. He does like the the kind of the split in three, mm -hmm. yep. a vertical, but it's split in three, and it's super cinematic wides of whatever. Um, but it's just like three gorgeous shots mm. on a loop for five seconds. That's your post right Dude. there. Like stop, stop worrying about like what to post. Just, yeah. just post three cinematic clips yeah. on top of each other and color grade it. And that's all you need. Yeah. Um, it looks yeah. amazing. I, yeah. I just feel like I, 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 <clears throat> I can't think of any of our clients that wouldn't love that. Yeah. You know, and, yep. and how stinking simple, uh, for, I, I know at the end of a shoot, like the last thing you want to do is like more work but uh, maybe save it for the next day. Um, I do love that, yeah. that phrase, um, don't create, document. And mm, I feel like yeah. this that is not my, mine. That's Gary Vee, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, whoever. It's like I'm, I'm hanging on to that because I, I just have the constant struggle of documenting. And really this kind of, yeah. let's rewind back to when you were graduating high school. Um, as people <laughs> were getting cell phones that could take photos and I don't remember when Instagram came out, but people, you know, people were posting everything and then they start posting videos and like everybody became like a, a filmmaker and that just mm -hmm. felt like it, 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 it just felt like it took some of the sweetness away from what we were able to provide for people. And so I, I think I've carried with me for the longest time. Like I'm just adding to the noise of what everybody else is doing by, by posting, even though I feel like, you know, I frame stuff better than like, you know, your regular person and my cameras yeah. and my lenses are better than what most people are using for with their cameras and whatever. But I, I think I'm just I'm like, everybody documents everything. So it's not even special anymore. Uh, I think that's been my biggest hesitation to, mm. to like share and I'm the worst. Yeah. It's like social poster because I just feel like it's just like, it's just noise, but in, yeah. in you can agree or disagree. There are certain people that, that want to know, they, they, they want to see the, the, the mini documentary of my life and my work because for whatever reason they're interested in those, some of those people mm -hmm. are my ideal clients. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <clears throat> I'm a, number one hypocrite of, of, um, posting and, and I, I actually, I'm not a hypocrite. I don't say I do. Um, I, I just don't. Um, but, but yeah, posting, um, the only thing it does is just keep you top of mind for people, right? right? It's totally. the same as a billboard on the side of the highway. Like you're creating a billboard on the side of the highway for nothing. And, um, and probably your ideal client is going to see it because they're the ones who are following you. Right. I mean, right. I think of your best clients over the years, have they just been like somebody that randomly showed up in your doorstep or they have been, have they been somebody that was like, Oh, I've been watching you guys as yeah. like, 
um, family or I've been looking at your family pictures and they're so lovely. Like, do you think you could do like a, a family shoot or, oh yeah, I have a business. Um, maybe you could do some videos for the business or something. It always starts out on a personal level uh, with some of the best clients and it's, it's not noise um, because to them it's valuable. Yeah. They're, they're seeing that as value um, to th- whatever they have going on. Yeah. Um, and when they need, when they have the budget, and when they have that need, they're going to come to you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to to that, I have one client that we just wrapped their project, I think, last month. And it was about 10 years in the making. And when mm. I sat down with him and his team, he introduced me to the team. And, and he also said, you, sh- you got to follow this guy on LinkedIn. Like, he's posting awesome content. And it was in that moment, I'm like, oh my gosh, like he, he reads my posts, he engages with my posts. Uh, he actually, now he's texting me. He's like, dude, this is your, uh, <laughs> you need, you need to be posting this. This is your, your lane. Um, but that's, that's a great wow. example of somebody who there was no opportunity to work together until there was. And I, and I was top of mind, right. I, I'm on mm-hmm. LinkedIn posting and, and he's following and, and he is like that ideal client. So in that regard, mm. yes, um, I, I do need to document. Um, there's a lot of things I need to do. I, and I like, you know, I do this work because I think in my heart of hearts, <laughs> I'm a storyteller. I love the documentary yeah. style. I love authenticity. But there's just part of me that feels like oh, this is inauthentic because uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I ask you a question? <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Um, so, uh, so no, this is my podcast. Have there been, I ask the questions. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Have, uh, have there been times where you have been really good at documenting, and and what was it that 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 process? Like, how did you make it work? Because I know there's cycles. You know, everybody kind of goes through these cycles. But I'm just curious, kind of for you, what was your cycle of like, oh, I've been killing it lately, and I have this content. Uh, yeah, has there been time like you know? Things? I think when we were doing weddings. That was super easy because okay. we had we had one focus. And then, and, and I wouldn't even say like I was posting much about myself, although I, I would post personal blog posts as well, but mostly like blog posts promoting, you know, here's the latest trailer, here's what we loved about doing it. And, you know, behind the scenes in that regard with adding another brand and then another brand, right? Another production brand. And then the the education brand, there's a couple of different audiences that I speak to. And, and, and I'm always kind of like, ah, I don't, I don't, who should I be talking to? <laughs> like, so I'm having my own, uh, <laughs> kind of like struggle with, yeah. uh, maybe I should just post like my family and like literally just document my life today. I'm working with 10X filmmakers and the Studio Sherpa stuff. I'm shooting a podcast. And then tomorrow I'm on set with Tell Studio and I'm just like, just document. And forever is following the <clears throat> right. education stuff. They're going to say like, oh, cool. He's doing that today. Oh, he's shooting that tomorrow. And, you know, we work with a social media team that started back in August or September. And they were really pushing me to say like, dude, it's fine. We want to post on LinkedIn. We want to post your, your tell studios production stuff. Cause that's why you're hiring us to land more production clients, but let us post some of this thought leadership stuff that this education stuff for filmmakers, because your, your video clients are going to see well, like, wow, he's positioned. He's a, he's a leader in this field. So that will help yep. build trust there. Um, but then also it's good because you have plenty of people in the video world that are following you on LinkedIn that want to see how are you doing business? So they're going to see how you're doing business, but then they're also going to be encouraged and inspired by more of the ed- educational stuff that is specific to them. So they're doing that. They've been doing that. And I guess that is working. When I think about posting really all I'm thinking about is Instagram. Like, uh, you know, I wanted that to be the space where I hung out. This is years ago. Uh, But Mm -hmm. as like everybody else, like, you know, signed up and started using, I'm like, "Eh, I'm just feeling like I'm not. uh, And then I'm like, do I do a reel? Do I do a story? Do I do a post? Like all of this. But even as we're talking, I love posting stories because I'm like, I can just post whatever, you know, Um, I'm definitely not consistent at it, but I want to post, you know, I want to add stuff to my grid and, uh, but it just, it always comes down to like not knowing exactly who it is that I'm, you know, trying to talk to. <laughs> I love that this yeah. is like a yeah. <laughs> therapeutic session for me as I'm just <laughs> spilling my guts here. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate you no. listening and asking good questions. No. Of course. Of course. I'm here. What's for your you show know. called again? Um, uh, Dr. Dr. Grano. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Grano. 
Oh man. Oh man. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting to see the evolution of what people, um, where people get the most engagement from. Mm. It's really depressing to be honest to me. I'm, I'm like a kind of a person to person type of person. So I'm just not going to post, but like now, now it's like Instagram reels or TikTok and just like, um, I just don't, I'm like so scared for the next like 10 years. Like, where are we going to be? Yeah. Like, where can we go from TikTok? You know, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> scary. Well, I think we're, we're going back to Vine is what I heard. Yes. <laughs> I, I was too young for that. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> oh man. Well, what's your, what is your, uh, your encouragement, your inspiration for, uh, for all of our filmmakers that are, you know, some of them, stuck and frustrated some of them feeling like oh it must be nice peter you work at an agency i'm trying to make this thing work for myself i'm trying to find my own clients and figure out how to not work non-stop like what what thoughts yeah. uh, or advice might you have uh, for for us i think I, i've had a few meetings recently with some friends who are freelancers and um first of all i was really encouraged by them just because they were the ones to reach out to me uh, you know, I'm in the marketing company and I'm in the, the client facing area. And so they're, they know that if they can get to me, they can get to some more clients. Right. Um, but I appreciate the fact that, and I was encouraged by the fact that they reached out to me, they were very humble about it. And they were, um, honestly just looking to have a relationship, um, grab coffee or whatever, and, or, uh, guacamole and tacos or whatever it is, um, lunchtime. But the, the, the thing I was just encouraged by was just the fact that they were trying to have a relationship. And that to me is the most important thing. Um, it's the same with thing. It's the same thing with any client. Um, you know, you, you don't just do stuff for money. Like you, there is a personal side to everything. Mm -hmm. And if there isn't, you probably don't care about it and it probably won't be very, very good. Um, so you really have to do it. You do have to care about it. And I feel like there's a lot of, um, as a freelancer, going to somebody at an agency, <clears throat> like a marketing company like ours, there's a lot of value you can provide just because you're the one doing the work a lot. And sometimes these people, depending on the agency, they might not even have a person in the house who can do these things. And um, and you're the expert. Like you, you know what's what's currently um, uh, you know the best as far as which gear to use or what types of, um, what styles of video. And you're the one paying attention to these ads that you keep on seeing. And, um, you're the one looking at camera techniques, but, um, I feel like the, the value you can bring to an agency if you, if you try to have that relationship is huge. Um, but I think you just have to know that it's a relationship. It takes time. It's not going to happen next week and it's probably not going to happen uh, within even six months, but it, it, if you are just consistent, um, it'll work out. Um, mm -hmm. It's that's one of the most like hard lessons I guess I've learned over the years is it's a long road um, to success, and being consistent is the most important thing. Being consistent mm -hmm. is the most important thing. Um, one more time, being consistent is the most important thing. So just knowing that through consistency. Um, with relationships, with content, um, it's going to work. You just got to give it time, <laughs> which <Yeah>. sucks. <laughs> Especially it's, if you're like trying to cover the bases right now or cover the budget yeah. and you just don't have that money right now, you don't have time. But, um, but again, you know, that, that's just how it kind of goes. And you, I think some of the people that get started in it, um, one guy in particular I met with recently, he was like, kind of asking, uh, at the end of our conversation, he asked me, so uh, how many projects a year do you think you know, you might have for me. And that was a good question that uh, we should, probably should at the beginning because I was like, probably like three or four, maybe <laughs> like all year long. Um, and that's like the most. Um, and I, I'm sure that was a depressing number for him, but it was just like, honestly, like you gotta, you gotta have a lot of relationships to, to find pro projects. Cause, um, you know, even, even marketing companies are trying to get their clients to agree to budgets. Um, and um, yeah, and and it, and it's a long term goal. Like like we're 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 talking with our clients for next year budget. You know, they're they're so slow. Um, they have not planned anything out. <laughs> we have to sit down with them every single month and be like, all right, so here's our plan for three quarters from now because we know it takes three quarters to get to like 
um, to planning it uh, and getting around to it. So just knowing that timeline is a slow thing. I think I wish I would have known that coming into it more. Um, it's just such a slow process, but it, mm. it is a process and it does work if you're consistent. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that word consistent, it's hard because it's like, man, that takes it's work. hard work. It takes, there's uh, it's this, work. You got to sweat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's work this out, work out. Quote, quote that I read the other day. It said, uh, "What did it say? Freedom is the price of discipline. Discipline is the price of freedom." Yeah, it was saying basically you need to be disciplined. Yeah, right. You yeah. you need to be consistent. <clears throat> oh, I hate that. Right. It, but but like if you want freedom, <laughs> like yeah. it, there's a small yeah. percentage of people that are going to experience some type of freedom without from our perspective, without having to work super hard or without having to be super consistent, that's not the majority yeah. of us. So the, the rest of us, we just have to know that we've got to show up, we got to be consistent. And if we can invest in relationships, like look, 18 years, like this, I'm, I'm almost at 19 years in this business. And the reason why the, these lights are on is because I've been pretty consistent and I've had 18 years of building relationships. I still work with some people that I worked with the very first year I got into business. So that wow. it's like, it's like interest, right? It compounds over <clears> time, <throat> but that's still, that doesn't mean like everything's great today. I've still got work and I've still got to be consistent in other ways because I want, I want to be more profitable. I want to be more efficient. I want to do other things. And so showing up consistently, investing in relationships consistently, if, if, you're in a spot where you need cash, an infusion of cash. You 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 got to do whatever, like wherever the low hanging fruit is. But part of your strategy, part of your long term strategy, if you want yeah. to do this business for like more than two years, you have to invest. You you have to like on a weekly basis be spending five minutes or ten minutes writing a card, sending somebody an invite to coffee. Like it just has to become mm. a part of what you are are going to do. If you're just yeah. like, you're looking for the one hit wonder, you're trying to find one agency client that's gonna be able to feed you a ton of work, you can do that. You can put all of your eggs in that basket, but that's not that's not super sustainable and it's not like, it's not super likely. So, yep. and the other here's, thing- here's, that, here's, Oh, sorry, I was just gonna say, I, here's an idea I just had that you're ta while you're talking that I need to do for myself and hopefully yeah, somebody else can gleam some stuff from this, but, um, <clears throat> Because I I'm so bad at posting, um, I I I just thought of this idea uh, on Fridays at 3 p.m. Just put a calendar, um, Google Calendar uh, event post uh, or find a post or something like that. Post something, <laughs> just just post something and and just have that on your calendar as a weekly sort of task or whatever on a Friday or whatever day you know you get to stuff um, that's not as important. Um, but just having that reminder, um, hopefully will keep you more consistent. I don't know. That's something I need to just do. Yeah, so ask yeah. me next week if I started doing that. Me too. Don't create documents. <clears throat> uh, but I, I, I think my last thought there is as you are building relationships, reaching out to people, connecting 18 years in this, like there are people that I really enjoy and people that I really mm. enjoy working with. So it's not just like the end result isn't just clients and revenue. It's like yep. you want to love this work too. And you want to love the people that you're working with. <clears throat> so if you can yeah. invest in people and in relationships, it just is like way more enjoyable. <laughs> so, and, and <laughs> like in doing that, the money follows, I think. It does. Yeah. The money's an afterthought, which is weird, but um, yeah, man. I, I, I've been listening to some of your, you know, previous episodes and the the thing that I've been noticing when I, when I watch previous podcast episodes back is, um, you know, you're saying it's a journey and to enjoy the journey, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And that, um, it's the same as like this whole like visual of like the studio Sherpas climbing a mountain, like, you know, you're climbing the mountain, but once you get to the top, you're not really there for that long. Like you got to get back down really quick. Um, and, and it's pretty dangerous on the top sometimes, which it is in any field. Um, you know, you start getting that hubris, um, at the top and, and you fall pretty far sometimes, but, but anyways, the, the journey, um, being the goal, I think is what I've, kind of come away with from a lot of the episodes previously, which is, um, I think 
um, yeah, like you're saying, that's just the most important thing to want to um, enjoy. And um, that's, that's the most important thing. Yeah, because, I mean, I think a lot of people fall into this work or get into this work because it's amazing to capture beautiful imagery and to create emotions from the work that you put together. Like there's, there's very few feelings like that. And then to watch a client, watch their video or to get their response from watching the thing that you put together, like that's like, uh, you know, talk about, uh, neurons and whatever synapse i don't know like the things happening in your brain that are like oh man that's amazing like who doesn't want more of that yeah but as as you're you know building this thing and staying consistent like you you've got to think through like what are the parts of this work that i do enjoy and Mm -hmm. you know if you if you don't need clients then like who cares but most all of us (laughs) need clients and so if you can find a field or you can find alignment with you know other people that share some values and uh be intentional about that like have a have have some kind of an idea of like what is a client what does an ideal client look like what are my values write those out and think through like i want to i want to work with clients they they don't have to believe all the things that i believe but if we can get some alignment that's going to be more it's going to be more enjoyable i mean uh And and that, that, like the whole idea of of the journey is exactly what you're saying. Like, like I want to enjoy this work. And the moment that you stop enjoying it is when you need to take a step back and say like, okay, what parts of this am I not enjoying it? Why might I not be enjoying it? Is it the kind of clients? Is it me? Have I changed? Have my values changed? Am I in misalignment with the people that, or the projects that we're working on? And at the end of the day, you're, if you're the owner of the business, you can change, you can pivot. And, and that's when you should do that. You, you should like literally say, what could I do different? What, mm-hmm. what can we change? Like what I, I, you can change yep. the type of video you do, the industry, the, the client, like you can change any of that. And, and you yeah. might need to, especially if, if there's no joy, if there's no joy and, and it's more, it just feels like work maybe you're not in the right field. Maybe you need to look at doing something different, but I would venture to say it's not that it's probably something else, not for sure, but it's probably yeah. something else. And it's probably, uh, you, you've, for, you've lost your way. You, you, you aren't working with your ideal client or people that align your values. And, uh, you kind of, you, you don't, you're not practicing your why you're not living out your why anymore. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. got, it's got lost. I think, Um, I have two thoughts on this. Um, the first thought is, um, creating passion projects, uh, is a huge way to get what you want. You know, I think that was a quote I heard on another podcast was, um, you know, your, your, what you shoot is what you get. Uh, so just know that. (laughs) And it's not completely true, but it's, it's fairly true. Like, uh, what we shoot, we, we get as far as future work. Um, the second thought was, um, that was, so I, I know you have a lady named Tina, I believe, on your yeah. team who kind of does like some of the um, coordinating and scheduling stuff. Um, I got an email from her for this podcast, but um, for for business builders, we have um, Hope on my team and she's um, basically the, the person that does all that stuff too. And wh- when I know, <laughs> I know very specifically the month she started um, working with me on it because that was like the best month ever when I didn't have to like, uh, keep track of budgets. Um, Mm -hmm. I didn't have to keep track of like where we were on task lists. I didn't have to keep track of model release forms. I didn't have to keep track of, uh, emails to the clients after the sheet. I didn't have to keep track of like all these things that were just like, uh, I hate that, (laughs) you know? (laughs) And, and, and that, and I don't know where where you have to be in a business to get somebody like that in your business, um, but I would say that should have been an early on thing um, for business builders. That was something that you know you have to get to that spot eventually with revenue. But but that was just one of those like oh wow like this is amazing you know sorts of moments where you have somebody on your team. So um, I don't know the the virtual assistant thing is that something that you would recommend to others um as opposed to like a, an actual team member at this point or oh man well i i just hired somebody yesterday oh. and as i was interviewing her 
she's getting ready to have a baby and she's like, Oh yeah, I wanted to bring that up. You know, I, my, my schedule is probably going to change for like three months. And you know, are you okay with that? Yeah. And, and I just said, look, I, i I think after hiring assistants through all of the years and having rock stars like Tina work, work with me, I've realized that I don't, there's no unicorns out there. There's nobody out there that's going to be able to do project management and video editing and email management, calendar, like all of the things. Like I can't do right. all, them all well. I realize that there's not one person out there that's going to do them all well. There, maybe they can do a bunch of them like pretty good. So I'm like, I'm yeah. fine. If I have 10 assistants, you know, this assistant is helping schedule social posts. This one is working on my email and calendar. This one is working on <clears throat> yep. project management. This one is working uh, just in helping with the Onward Summit. I'm cool with that. Like, I, I'm finally to the place. Now, my my newest hire, I'm hoping that she can help manage some of those people and those projects so that I'm, mm -hmm. like, having to not have as many conversations with a graphic designer, but, like, she can have those conversations. I can just say, like, hey, we need graphics for the thing. You know, get it done. <laughs> so my, my recommendation hundred percent is, is if you can look at the tasks that you're doing, the ones that suck the most, uh, the ones that suck the most period, I was going to say that, you know, take the most time or the most energy, um, and, and just think through like what, what how often are you doing that task? How many times a day? How much, how much time over the course of the week? Uh, let's just say it's, it's an hour a day. Let's say it's five hours what would you pay to like not have to do that ever again? Like what kind yeah. of energy would you get back? So not only are you not spending an hour a day on it anymore. So you're going to get an out. Let's just say you get an hour back every day. So mm -hmm. in that hour, you could, man, you could document, stay top of mind for a potential client. You could take somebody out to coffee, right? That's enough time to grab a quick coffee with somebody or have somebody stop by the studio or write somebody, write like five handwritten cards and, you know, take them to the mailbox. And I mean, there's a lot of like, you know, if you're like, oh, I don't have enough yep. clients, like, cool. Like you get one extra hour every week just to like work on getting more clients. So let's just say you do all of that work over the course of a month. So that's five hours a week times four weeks. That's 20 hours. You spend 20 hours and, and you do get like one client out of all of that activity. You're taking people to lunch, you're sending cards out. So what's a potential client worth? I'm going to guess I'll just take a low guess, $2,500, 20 hours for $2,500. That's more than a hundred dollars an hour, I think. So that's pretty good rate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> would you spend, uh, would you pay somebody $150 to make $2,500 or $2,000? And, and then also yes. to not have to do that work, that work that sucks ever again. Mm -hmm. Would you pay $150? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It yeah. wouldn't be $150. Let's let's say it's $25 an hour times uh, five hours. That's $125 a week times four weeks. So it's $500. So let's just step yeah. back. Would you pay $500 in a month to make $2,000 or $2,500? Probably. Yes. I mean, it seems like a pretty good return. And then also to have yeah. the energy and the time back of not doing something that you just despise. And, and then again, remember... We're in this for the long play. It's mm -hmm. it's a journey. It's commitment. It's sticking with it. So maybe you do this for a month and you don't get a new client. Maybe it takes three months or six months. So it could feel like, man, I'm I'm wasting five hundred dollars a month. That 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 math is totally wrong. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But regardless, <laughs> hiring somebody for twenty bucks, thirty bucks an hour, and just having it's them help it. out five it's hours a week. Yeah. for you to get your energy back in time uh, to be able mm -hmm. to create space to find new clients and do other revenue generating things in your business. Like, oh my gosh, it's, it's, it's been one of the best and smartest things. People ask me like, hey, if you were going to start your business all over, what would be your first hire? Between a, a, a project manager or assistant or editor, like, uh, like I just think of all three of those or, or producer. Um, so somebody that can do all the things, no. But <laughs> I do know that man, if I hired an assistant like today, I'm going to mm. be more freed up. And that's that's why you want to hire people. You want to hire people so that your time can be freed up. You know, you hire an editor yep. so you don't have to, 
spend the bulk of your week editing the project that you just filmed. Like you can't do that. Yeah. I mean, you can, uh, for me and the way that I want to build my business in my life, I don't want to spend the majority of my time editing. I just don't like, it's fun. Yeah. It's cool. But, uh, I, I ain't got time for that. You know, I'm, I'm at a stage <laughs> in my life where, uh, I've got to be doing other things. Yeah. Is yeah. that helpful? Does that answer your question? That is amazing. Yeah. I like I, that and a whole lot more. I'm, I'm ready. Uh, it's funny. Uh, you know, I'm right now just behind the scenes we're we're coming out of a slow season where I've been doing all the things, but, um, just this last month, you know, we've ramped back up, which is weird for July. Usually it's not July, but, um, uh, ramping back up to a spot where it's like, Oh gosh, I cannot do all this stuff. Um, and it's great because our team knows how to flex with the seasons and, um, you know, it's just a conversation away from like, Hey, I need another editor. Okay, great. Yeah. Here we got, we got budget here. We don't have much budget, but here you go. <laughs> Here's a little bit of budget. Um, and, uh, you'll find an editor. Um, but, but that has been, yeah, the editing, um, is, is a huge time suck for me. I love it. And unfortunately I need to stop loving it so much, but it's, yeah. it's one of those, <laughs> um, it's one of those things that just eats away at your day. Yeah. You're like, Oh wow. Like 10 yeah. hours later, Spent I finished hours. a. Yeah. 30 second edit. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Not worth it uh, for nope. the, for the revenue. Peter, this has been super fun, man. Uh, how can uh, they see some of the work that you guys are doing and uh, where are you at on the socials that people can see your documented life? Yeah, man. Um, go to business builders uh, on YouTube, on Vimeo, uh, on Facebook, Instagram, uh, we do spell our name kind of weird on our website. The website is www.businessbuilders.com, but it's it's a Hebrew spelling, B-L-D-R-S, no vowels on the last part there. So it's really weird. We'll uh, we'll buy out the other company sometime once they get That's right. <laughs> out of business. But anyways, uh, Business Builders uh, is where it's at. And socials? Uh, business Builders. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if you, if you, we'll uh, put it in I the don't show post, notes. I don't post, so you're not going to find anything great on my, uh, social medias, but, um, business builders is, is some good stuff. Um, honestly, it's a lot of, so f as a freelancer and, and needing some guidance on websites, marketing, other stuff, um, hopefully business builders, um, Instagram can be a good resource. It has a ton of practical, um, kind of carousel posts on like what what you need on your website, what you need mm -hmm. in a marketing funnel, all this thing. So go check it out. It's actually really helpful just to me because I'm not in it as much, but it's it's free value um, to me just you know being around it all the time. It's it's very helpful perspectives and hopefully they'll give you a leg up on um, some conversations that you might have with marketing companies um, that you work with, be like, oh yeah, I know what a funnel mm -hmm. is, and like, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, it's helpful to know all the things, even if you're not an expert at it. Love it, so good. So good getting time with you today, man. Appreciate your perspective. Thanks for uh, coaching me along the way here and letting me uh, you know, reflect and have, have a moment here during my own show. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah, man, thank you so much for having me on and uh, it's been a pleasure, thank you. Again, my friend, thank you for uh, for being here. You made it to the end. Couple of things, don't don't stop listening to this yet or don't stop watching this yet. Uh, if you want access to the show notes where there's links and all of the things that we mentioned, just go to studiosherpas.com slash 347. That'll take you right to that magic place unless you're uh, listening to this on a, a different app. Uh, there should be show notes on there. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, hello, hi, uh, leave a comment. Let me know if you have a big takeaway, if there was a moment that stood out and you just said, like, yes, I resonate with this. I like this. Uh, make more of this um, or just something that uh, is making you think different and uh, maybe would be inspiring you toward building uh, a better uh, video business. So appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, if you want to get plugged into our community, we have a free Facebook group. So if you're into Facebook, we have this free group and all you need to do is go to studiosherpas.com slash community and it'll take you right there. That's worth checking out. There's over a thousand people in that group, incredible human beings that are really trying to help uh, each other out. Uh, it's all filmmakers. So uh, go there and get plugged in if you're not already. And uh, if you're not coming to the Onward Summit, you probably hear about that when you get inside of the, the uh, group there, but that's our in-person event at our studio near Detroit, Michigan in October. So check that out if you want. And you're at a computer, you can type in studiosherpas.com slash onward 
that is the Onward Summit. Uh, so uh, yeah, a whole bunch of us are gonna get together and it's gonna be an incredible time. This is our fourth time doing it. I was, I was sitting down, don't leave, just one more quick story here. I was sitting down to record this and as I was sitting down, it's like, okay, another intro and outro I gotta, I, I gotta do. And I just, I had this moment of clarity where I was like, oh my gosh, I get to do this. <laughs> this is so fun. Uh, I forgot, I, there, I think there was just, there was a moment of forgetting that I get to like create content like this where I, I feel like years ago, I would have dreamed, dreamed about having a show or a YouTube channel or just like creating content that could bring clarity, that could bring uh, help to a business. I, I, I'm just, I'm like, wow. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, the, years ago, I was like, oh, wouldn't that be cool? Here I am doing it and I forgot like, oh, this was a dream and uh, I'm grateful, I'm reminded and I'm very grateful. So thank you for making it all the way to, this to the end of this episode. I mean, this is like the end, the end. Um, if you need anything, let me know. I would love to help you however I can. Uh, you can email me. My email address is ryan at studiosherpas.com. Uh, you can also follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram at Ryan Coral and at Grow Your Video Business. And then I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn too. So I'm just Ryan Coral on there. It's a lot of links, a lot of places. Uh, whatever resonates with you, go follow your heart and I will see you uh, wherever that space is very, very soon. Otherwise, I'll see you on next week's episode.